My next guest is a flyweight contender. He trains out of Nobody MMA in Fairfield, California. And you can catch his next fight at Cage Warriors 159 when he takes on David Lopez in San Diego, California. He's the man they call the wrong turn. Mr. Wrong Turn. Terrence Say Turn Jones, me right now. Terrence, always a pleasure, my friend. And you're looking really good. Looks like you got a fight coming up. You look pretty lean. Thanks, and uh, I don't know. You look like you've been training for a fight for the past few weeks. Yeah, man, I've been training. I've been training since uh, my last fight, actually. I haven't really taken any time off. But, uh, yeah, I'm getting ready for David Lopez in a little bit under two weeks now out in San Diego, California for Cage Warriors. And I'm excited, man. I'm ready to go out there and do what I love to do. A lot of people only talk about fighting three or four times a year. Now you're actually doing it. And that's like a hard thing to say. But in actuality, that's very difficult to do. You're talking about multiple weight cuts, multiple camps. And for you, now we're talking an even more compressed of a schedule because it's not even September yet. And you're putting the finishing touches on your third camp. How are you feeling right now? And how has all managing all that activity, how have you had to uh, prepare or strategize for that to make sure your body's taken care of? Uh, well, first off, I feel great. Um that's part of the reason why I like to stay pretty active throughout the year so that my body's not like blowing up. And then when I got to lose the weight again, it's not like, what the fuck are we doing, man? Like, you know, so, um, but as far as like managing, managing the weight and then like staying consistent at, uh, with training, everything's been the same. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't really get too big after my last fight. I just kind of went back to the gym. Um, took some, I took like a little bit of time off to let some things heal. But then after I just I jumped right back in. And um, yeah, I'm excited. Why is the time? Why is now the time to get back in the cage? Because a lot of people look at that last fight that you had. And we'll get into that in a second and be like, he probably isn't going to come back for the rest of the year. But you're you're going right back out there. What's the rationale behind it? Uh, just to go back in there and then get this uh, get this monkey off my back, man, and uh, just to stay active. Um, like I said, I really love to do what I what I'm doing, and um, uh, what's a better way to scratch, you know, to get a, get an L off of your mind than to get back in there and then get back on the win and call them where I belong. You know what I'm saying? 2023, it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride. You kick it off the year with a highlight real knockout off Keanu Moyer. That was a really exciting fight. And, you know, just like the elation, like you had to dig deep for that fight. You got it. And then the second fight, it doesn't go your way. It's, it's ground out to a 15 minute decision. Obviously you're really, you're really disappointed. Nobody envisions going out there and it not working out. How have you managed the highs and the lows of the fight game in 2023? That's a good question. Um, well, just like you said, the highs are the highs, the lows are the lows. And then uh, luckily for me, Coach Sonny is always reminding us that that there are, the highs are the highs and the lows are the lows, but it's up to you to kind of just stick around that middle level area so that you're not getting too big headed and you're not getting too down on yourself. Um so that's that's really been a big part of it, really. And then uh, all my teammates and my family, you know, like they they support me a lot, and and uh, they got my back. So after this, they were just like, "Dude, it's cool, man. Just get back to work, and uh, we'll fix the things we need to fix, and we'll do better next time." So that's just what I've been doing. The fight against Lake G. Lake is arguably one of the top flyweight prospects in the country. A very gifted wrestler, a very gifted grappler. And this was a fight like when when that when that fight was happening between you two, I circled that one because I was like, that's that'll be one to keep an eye on. Because when I think of like the pecking order on the West Coast flyweights, you know, his name came up, your name came up. And I was like, OK, I understand why this fight's happening, but it'll be an interesting one to see when you go back and you look at that fight with the fresh pair of eyes. Can you talk to me a little bit about how did you use that? How did you use that fight? How did you use the result of that fight to evolve? Well, uh, I believe we had this conversation uh, before as far as like changing up the way that you fight. And as an amateur, like I, I wrestled a lot more and uh, I shot a lot more. I took a lot. I took a, I took people down more often. And with the, especially the fight with Lake and then even the fight with Keanu, like, I didn't shoot or even try to 
establish some sort of top position in the fight. And uh, it's kind of like a shame on me, you know, like, why the fuck am I abandoning what I was uh, doing really so good um, when I was an amateur? And then like you were saying, I think, I think it was you, you were saying something like why uh, something about changing the horse that got you there. So it was something like that. Something like that. I'm the horse that got you there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That sounds like something I'd say. <laughs> yeah. It was something along the lines of that, but I remember I was talking to you about it, though. So obviously you would go back, you'd look at the lake fight, and it's really easy to diagnose, be like, okay, these are all the things I don't like. These are all the things I want to work on. But what were some of the positive things about that fight? Because if you look hard enough at it, I'm sure there were some things that you did that you were happy with. Yeah, definitely. We, I did everything that other than, <laughs> other than, uh, when I did everything that I trained to do as far as like on the feet, um, I threw and landed just about everything that I wanted to land, uh, when I, when we were on the feet, but it was just, you know, so I'm happy with that. Uh, as far as like the result, it's, you know, like not, doesn't really feel too great with the result, but as far as like the things that we were practicing, I was able to, I was able to land them and I was able to make them happen. So that, that's a good takeaway from it. And I didn't give up, you know, that's a lot. That's, uh, I feel like a lot of people, um, when they're losing a fight, you know, and there's short time left or whatever, they kind of just like, they kind of just take it, you know, and they accept it. They accept, fuck it. I'm just going to lose. But, um, that didn't necessarily happen with me. I felt like I fought, you know, I left it every, I left everything out there the whole entire, for the whole entire 15 minutes. I didn't stop until the final bell. So that, that was another good takeaway from it as well. Do, at what point do you get a call from cage warriors offering you an opportunity to fight in San Diego? Because I'm looking at this and it's like in the grand scheme of things, the lake fight wasn't really that long ago. We're talking only four or five months later on. And here we go. At what point do you get notified uh, of this opportunity at Cage Warriors 159? I believe it was like uh, two months ago. But I was already training though, man. Like I, like I said, I only took like a little bit of time off to let some things heal up. But I, I was back, back in the gym and I was doing the things that I needed to fix. And I've been doing, I mean, you know, fixing the things that I've needed to fix since that fight. So it kind of just worked out. Um, I had an offer for Long Beach. Um, but uh, some things fell through, you know, the stars didn't align. And then luckily Cage Warriors had uh, got, a, excuse me, Cage Warriors got a, um, you know, got an opponent for me and David Lopez. And um, it, which is cool because I've, I've wanted to fight for Cage Warriors for a while now, you know, Blake fought for them, Caesar fought for them. So it's just, you know, I'm like, man, I want to go down to San Diego and fucking fight for them. That sounds cool, you know. I, I think I have the type of relationship with you where I can ask this question pretty comfortably. When you take an L, is it kind of like amusing and odd in a way in the sense that like you start recognizing like how fickle MMA media is and how fickle fans are? Because I'm going on Tapology and I, I, I pulled up your fight against Lopez. Like uh, there's your Tapology and then there's his. And I look at it. It's like 85% of everybody's on Lopez right now. And I'm just laughing and I'm just kind of like, that's kind of funny because it really wasn't that like people kind of forget like you've been a heavy favorite for almost every single one of your fights. You lose one fight and then it's like, no, everyone's off of you now. And I'm just wondering <laughs> if you find it as amusing as I do. That's uh, I mean, I know, I knew that I've always been a really heavy favorite, especially out here or up in Northern California. Uh, I didn't know that everybody was really rooting for David like that, but I mean, I'm not really tripping though. It's not really a big deal. Um, I had this conversation with one of my teammates recently and um, I told them, I was like, dude, people can say whatever the fuck they want to say about me, man, because I really don't give a shit. And because at the end of the day, really what I think about myself, that's what matters to me the most. So I'm not really tripping if uh, people, if I'm a favorite or if I'm an underdog and people want me to lose, it's cool because, you know, they're going to tune in to fight anyways. David Lopez, he's a three and one fighter, a talented guy from what I've seen. What is your take on David Lopez? Like, obviously, you're the type of guy that does a little bit of homework on the people that you fight. Without giving anything away, like, do you have a general opinion of Lopez at this point? Yeah, he's tough as fuck, man. 
Definitely tough as fuck. He's going to be there the whole entire time. That's what I expect out of him. He's coming out of a good team. I believe Team Quest. I think it's Team Quest. Uh, I might be wrong, but... Uh, I think but, you're... Yeah, yeah. So, he comes from a good team. He's tough as fuck. Um, you know, he proved it in his last fight. Um, and then I watched his first fight with Cage Warriors as well. He's tough, man. He can finish people, and he's going to be he's gonna be there. So, I'm excited. As far as the matchup against him, where do you feel like you have an advantage over him? When I think of you, I actually think of uh, the amateur fights, really. I know your game is night and day compared to that, but I think of somebody who can get a single leg really well, somebody who's actually a very technical fighter, somebody you don't want to grapple with. And I'm just curious, like, do you feel like your wrestling and grappling actually give you an advantage over Lopez? I believe so, yeah, and I think that um, I think that a lot of people are kind of forgetting that I can wrestle, you know, just because I got wrestle fucked my last fight. I think people are kind of forgetting, like, oh yeah, this guy can wrestle. So um, that'll be a good uh, reminder. It'll be a good reminder for people, and um, I definitely think that I got the speed advantage against David, and. Um, and uh, the technical advantage over him. I think I got more tools in the tool in the toolbox than he does. Um, so those are those are the things that I'm I'm thinking that I'm better than him at. With a win over Lopez, that would advance your record up to four and one. And then what makes sense for you after that? Are you looking if things go your way and you know we get out of this fight relatively unscathed and the result goes your way? Is the intention to fight again before the end of the year, or are you just gonna take a break until 2024? Yeah, definitely. I would like to uh, get one more in before the end of the year. Um, uh, things go to plan, and uh, I don't. I come out without without any injuries or anything. Uh, I'm looking uh, at a pretty quick turnaround, and then close out the year with that last fight after this. But uh, definitely not looking past David, and. Um, Cause I know he's going to be a really tough fight, but like I said, ideally we get out, uh, we come out of this fight unscathed, uh, un uninjured. Um, and, uh, there'll be a pretty quick turnaround. So, yeah. I have one kind of final question for you. And it's simply this. When I think about the flyweight class in a major MMA promotion, like really the only game in town for you is either one or the UFC because PFL right now, they don't have a flyweight division. And Bellator, they've talked about starting one up, but that has really yet to materialize. But like when you look um, at like at one FC at the UFC, do you get excited when you watch the flyweights in those promotions compete? And how close do you think you are to uh, being there one day? Hell yeah, I get excited, man. Especially you know like with because uh, I'm a big fan of MMA as well. Anyway, so uh, of course I get excited. Um, I believe that within the next like two years, I'll be I'll be right up there with everybody else. You know, um, um, as far as like which promotion that I would prefer to go to, obviously, I told you before, I would like to go to one. Uh, the rule set, um, the rule set kind of just fits the way that I fight, you know, and um, I want to know how it feels to knee somebody in the face as hard as I can when they're on the ground. So that. That's going to be some. That's been something on my bucket list for a while now. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, Terrence, I want to give you an opportunity for everyone who's going to be coming down to watch you fight, for the people back at home that are going to be watching you compete here in a couple of weeks. Did you have a message for your supporters, uh, for your family, for the people that um, are coming out to support you? Do you have a message for those people? Because, you know, here we are, close, we're getting close to uh, fight night here. And, I know you have a lot of people in your corner and it's not all always possible to talk to each and every person ahead of the fight. Yeah. Uh, for all everybody that supports me, my family, my teammates, my, my friends. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, I love you guys with all of my fucking heart. And um, it's going to be a really fucking good fight. Just like it, like all of my fights are. And um, thank you guys for being in my corner. Thank you guys for the support. You know, I'm excited, man. I can't wait to fucking go out there and do and do what I love to do and get back on this win column where I belong. Well, I know that you have a lot of people that uh, you'll be representing on your trunks when you walk out. If there's any one of those people that you need to talk about before I let you go, let's do it. Definitely uh, wealthy families, financial services and insurance, uh, WK Foundation, 
Um, Hard to Overcome, Cheddar Made, La Cabana, La Colorina, Sev Life Sounds, Whiskey Throttle Racing, uh, Solution Supplements, Freshly Rooted Tribe, My Team, Nobody MMA, Train for Life, uh, Saber Jiu Jitsu, Team Saronio. Um, yeah, we're, we're ready to fucking go, guys. Well, Can't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you tune in to Cage Warriors 159. That happens in a couple weeks. Terrence, I appreciate you, and I hope that we can uh, do this again before the uh, 2023 calendar year flips over to 2024. So lastly, I, I also want to give a shout-out to my girl, Nicole. She's the one that makes all my fight shirts. And uh, without her support, you know what I'm saying, it would be a shit show. <laughs> so thank you, babe. I love you. I love you so much. Follow her on uh, Nick K Art uh, on, uh, on Instagram. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Thank Dan, you. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you for having me on, bro. Oh, absolutely. Hang on. Hang on. Give me one second. Here we go. So I brought this down here. This is a, a, a shirt. <laughs> How about this? I still got this and she designed it. It's pretty dope. And, she did. Uh, yeah. There we go. And the other one is you, uh, you know, it, like, I, I think it's from, uh, when you beat Keanu, cause you're like, yeah, I think like they snapped it. I think oh, yep. that picture yeah. and made it like uh, anime style or whatever. And it looks pretty dope. Yeah. 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 Um, that's going to be the same design for this next tee, uh, just different colors. So, uh, yeah, I had to do something cause I cut my hair and, um, those, those, those shirts are dope and everything, but you know, I cut my hair earlier this year and I wasn't trying to kind of like give false advertisement with me with long hair and people are gonna be like, what the fuck? Like, you don't have long hair right now, fool. Why are you fucking selling this shit right now? Hey, well, uh, you know, spoiler, I'm a fair, I'm a fan of uh, short hair as you can tell. So, Hey, 